can't heal if they're not getting in enough protein. And keep in mind too, that not just with protein, but other nutrients in general, that kids need more fuel and nourishment pound by per pound of body weight compared to adults because their bodies are doing so much growing, developing, and then you add a healing journey on top of that. And they need even more fuel. So some facts about protein, um, it builds and repairs all structures in the body, including skin. It doesn't get stored in the body like fats and carbs do. So it needs to be eaten daily to keep tissues from breaking down. And I do recommend a serving with each meal to ensure that enough is getting in. And the guidelines that you see online for how much protein your child should be eating and often what you hear from your doctor or other conventional practitioners are really for preventing deficiency. They're not for optimal health and certainly not adequate for skin healing. So this actually goes for all nutrients. Like if you just are searching online for like, you know, the RDAs, like the, um, you know, required amounts of nutrients for any vitamins, minerals, um, macronutrients, which are carbs, fats, and proteins, you're going to see that the recommendations really are literally for preventing deficiency. That's it. So they don't account for growth and development, and they certainly don't count for like a healing journey. So um, another thing too, like if you're really curious about um, some of what it takes for, you know, nutrients for healing, you do a search for like nutrition for wound healing. Cause essentially we're talking about healing what's on the skin, right? So if you do a search for nutrition for wound healing, you can see that it's going to take above the general guidelines to actually get the skin to heal the wound to heal. So I do recommend to my clients about um, 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day at a minimum. Um, and to find out how much protein your child needs on their healing journey, you can divide their weight in pounds by 2.2 and then multiply that number by 1.5 at a minimum. And the number you get is the amount of protein in grams your child should eat daily. Um and I apologize. I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a gardener outside of my window right now blowing things. I hope Zoom has been very good about blocking background noise. So I apologize if you guys can hear that. If not, awesome. Thank you, Zoom. Um, anyway, so to find out if your child's also eating enough, you can also use a nutrition tracking app. Um, the one that I've used in the past, there's several, like my fitness pal chronometer is another one. And you can set up a free account. You can enter in, you know, what your child's eating and it shows you, you know, how much they're getting in. So you can adjust if needed, but generally like, I am not a fan of having to track or count or journal because again, food isn't the root cause of the problem. So just a couple quick tips to make sure your child is getting enough protein. Um, just include a protein source with each meal. So animal foods like chicken, beef, fish, eggs contain all of the conditionally essential and essential amino acids. Therefore, they're considered complete proteins, whereas plant-based proteins, so like soy, soy products, nuts and seeds, lentils, beans, and quinoa, um, most plant proteins are not complete because they don't contain the full spectrum of essential and conditionally essential amino acids. And this is important because essential amino acids come from the diet. That's the only way they get in. And then the conditionally essentials are made from the essentials. So you really need the essential amino acids coming in from the diet in order to meet metabolic needs. Um, you can also, so number one, again, make sure that there's a protein source with each meal. And then the second strategy is you can add a protein powder.